It's the last day of the week, Friday's here, and a number of you have unfortunately had to return back to work after the long holidays. I'm hoping that you still know how to use your laptops and you still know how to do your work around the office. <laughs> Welcome to the show. My name is Olive Emody, and thank you very much for joining us. And I'm Joe Hansen. Thank you so much for staying here. It's been um, a, a fun-filled, somewhat tedious, in-between mix of stories from Monday all the way to Friday. Fortunately for, for for those who chose this profession, this is what you you were made for. This is what this is a life we live for, right? I mean, there are no holidays. This is the moment. This is the moment. The, the moment, moment we, we live, live for. for. No holidays for us. Do you know yeah. why? Why? Because the holy book says no rest for the wicked. <laughs> the last time I checked, there's only one week wicked by my right. <laughs> so I don't know who. Now lie. <laughs> so long as you are part of this thing, you are wicked. <laughs> And no rest for you. <laughs> oh, oh my wow. goodness. A lot is happening <laughs> on the Nigerian uh, 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 political scene. Uh, so much has been uh, said, especially the tragedy that occurred uh, two days back. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, it's still a conversation. If you check your timelines on social media, it's still there. The Lagos Calabar um, Coastal Road is still a big, big conversation, especially with the Minister of Works uh, declaring and making it known the actual figure uh, per kilometre, what it will cost, and the total in trillions, I'm sure PDP would definitely have their own response. Labour Party also going through their very own crisis. That's on political aspect. On the economy as well, well, good We're news. seeing the Naira recovering, which uh, is the best we've seen in months. We're excited about it. Some have said that this recovery is artificial mm -hmm. and that in a few weeks or maybe months would revert back to the chaos that it was towards the end of last year. But we hope that it's not true. We're saying that the CBN will say it's a good job done so far. Well done to the Central Bank of Nigeria. I want to see sustained efforts in the recovery of the Naira. And not just with that, we want to see this you know, touching different facets because when we start to see the Naira recover, in no time, we'll start to see that the prices of goods and services are of course reducing. Uh, this morning we're going to be having breakfast headlines and bringing us breakfast uh, headlines. We have Adebola Adeduba. Hello Adebola, good morning. Hi Olive and Joe, good morning, happy Friday. Happy Thank Friday. Thank you, good morning. I, I mean, I did not see Adebola during the whole day. Really? Adebola was doing it. I was here. <laughs> are you sure about Which, that? I was. I was. Oh, are you, are you? Are you sure about absolutely she was celebrating sure. no 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 <laughs> it, it can't be we, okay My, maybe she was on the afternoon shift i was actually yeah. i was okay, okay. you were on the afternoon right yeah I I was was morning as well morning, morning. morning. And but, but, then but afternoon, time yes. possible I was. morning well are, are we not in the are we not on yeah, the i think she did well. actually but that was before the holiday you <laughs> were not that was, that was on monday <laughs> on monday so so tuesday wednesday like thursday she was off <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't hate. Don't be a hater. It's okay. Don't worry. Are, everybody's back to work. The roads are busy again here in Lagos. Yes. So, uh, well done to everyone who's back to work. And I'm so sorry to those who are feeling heartbroken. We like holiday too much in this country. Man. Work. Work is good. So, keep working, Nigeria. You know what someone said? Someone said they should just add Friday now. Exactly. Let it just really? be complete. Honestly, I mean, if I wasn't a journalist and I knew that this holiday was going to take the turn that it would have taken, I would have taken the risk. And gone somewhere on Tuesday, maybe go to like Bene Republic, go to Casa del Papa. Do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then come back to your country on Sunday. Hmm. Wow. Feeling refreshed. Nice, long, sweet holiday that is there. Uh, With a query, a fresh query, <laughs> a fresh query waiting for you in your okay. mailbox. Uh, Please explain to us it's why. It. Now, who they are live, the answer query. Oh, wow. You understand? <laughs> you have to prioritize the things that are important in this life. Holiday is mm. one of them. And I'm, mm. as I'm saying this thing, I'm hoping that HR is taking note. Holiday is a very important part of work because you have to be refreshed to be able to come back to work. Hello and welcome to Breakfast Alliance here on New Central TV. I am Adebola Adeduba. Our coverage begins with security matters. Uh, bandits have reportedly killed two farmers who were displaced from their ancestral homes in Omogidi community in the Entakpa Council Ward in Utupo local government area of Benue State, Nigeria. Two others are said to have been injured and another abducted by bandits in a renewed attack. Local citizens recently fled their homes due to a similar attack but decided to go to their farms in Omogidi where they were killed on Tuesday. We head to Niger Delta region where the Ijo Youth Council's national spokesperson Bedford Berefa has voiced concerns over increasing military harassment of prominent figures in the Niger Delta 
fearing it could reignite unrest after years of peace. The cited instances of alleged military excesses, including raids on community and intimidation of leaders. Berefa criticized South-South governors for failing to address the issue, accusing them of prioritizing personal gain over public welfare. Away from that, let's now tell you that Nigeria's former Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Gunaya Ono, under the Muhammadu Buhari's administration is dead. Ono, a former governor of Abia State, died after a brief illness in an undisclosed hospital in Nigeria. Recorded the late 72-year-old former minister contested for the presidential flag of the All-Progressive Congress during the 2023 general election, but lost to President Bola Chinobo. And still on the health matters, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, says it is rec recalling Benilin Pediatric Syrup manufactured by Johnson & Johnson following recent toxicity findings in the laboratory on the products. Laboratory analysis conducted on the product showed that it contains an unacceptable high level of dietylene glycol and was found to cause acute oral toxicity in laboratory animals. Ghana's vice president and ruling party presidential candidate, Mohamedou Bawumia, on Thursday took a resolute stance against LGBTQ practices, saying that cultural and societal norms and values as Ghanaians frown on the practice of homosexuality. Homosexuality has emerged as a highly charged political issue in Ghana, intensifying since Parliament passed a law criminalizing all LGBTQ acts in February. And we'll move to South Africa, where the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamola, is uh, you know, delivering a public lecture at the University of Johannesburg under the theme Legal Education and its Role in Achieving Social Justice in South Africa. And that's a wrap on Breakfast Alliance. It's back to Joe and Olive. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Debola. Great stories there. The one in particular is that in Ghana, uh, where we've seen the president uh, renege uh, in ensuring that he did pass the bill, of which we had a guest, uh, the sponsor of that bill from the uh, Senate. Uh, but then again, it's a continuing, as a story, a developing story that all Ghanaians are in talks and they're talking about it especially looking at the fact that there were threats coming from the international community that should that bill, the anti-LGBTQ uh, and, of course, others be passed, then there could be dire consequences for Ghana. Mm. Well, absolutely. There's been, you know, uh, support in favour and against of that, uh, you know, motive, you know, that bill being passed into law and how this might likely affect other African countries like Nigeria, like Senegal, you know, how this could spiral into influence, influence decisions of, you know, uh, other African countries. But hey, I mean, time will tell. Uh, we'll just wait and see how that transpires. Well, I, I, I'd like to just quickly also touch on something that happened, something very tragic that happened, you know, uh, this week. And that's in the entertainment industry in Nigeria. We lost a dear, you know, a dear one uh, to us here in Nigeria. That's uh, Junior Pope, and as well as other crew members. Uh, you know, concerns have been raised as to uh, water safety management. Who monitors the waterways uh, when it comes to safety of people? You know, uh, using this, uh, you know, means of transportation. Uh, there's been calls here and there, queries here and there for the producer to be fired and all sorts of things. But I think we need to look more into safety when it comes to our waterways. Who monitors all of these safety routines uh, for those body, you know, going on a boat, on a ship, and all of that. I mean, the, this has to be overhauled when it comes to safety in terms of our water spaces. It's such a shame that it took a disaster for us to sit up and decide that we want to now start looking at ways to implement safe travels on the waterways here in Nigeria. Junior Pope did not have to die. The crew members, the makeup artists, the sound guy, they did not have to die for this to happen. Precautions should have been taken. And uh, the investigation needs to be carried out. The question now is who is to blame? People, like you've mentioned, have called for the producer to be, uh, to be arrested and investigated. The Actors Guild of Nigeria has released a statement saying that no one should work with the producer for now. Uh, we also saw reports where they had also said that she's um, suspended for now and that it's, there's a suspension on the production of the movie, which has a very interesting name, Another Side of Life. Mm -hmm. you know? so very ironic. A very interesting name. And, and it's just a very sad scenario. I, I worry about his wife and how she's faring, about how she's going to break this news to their children. 
who by now most likely already know because, because it's all over social media. Um, my heart also um, goes out to the friends and the loved ones in the industry. Yesterday we read out a number of people who have unfortunately passed and it's only just the fourth month of the year. Nollywood has seen a great hit from, you know, Junior Pope, Amechi Monago, Sisi Quadri, a number of them have died this year already. And uh, just to also throw some light on the fact that we need to be kinder and more sensitive, there was an actor who put out a picture of his core, his corpse on uh, social mm -hmm. media. He's come under fire and he's come to give a, uh, a, a, a statement saying that he's not into clouds. But people must understand that when your loved ones are their most vulnerable and most sensitive is not when you want to make videos to post on social media. If you truly care about someone, that's not the first thing you're thinking of. You can talk about someone being dead without posting their dead body. We've mm -hmm. seen this happen before. Absolutely. Let's not start calling other celebrities' names exactly you know, who have terms. done this and have come under fire. It's such bad behavior. It's behavior done in poor taste. It should be totally, totally discouraged. Nobody should do that. Nobody's family deserves to see their loved one's dead body on social media. It's a very unkind thing to do. And I'm hoping that we can learn from this beyond him coming to give speeches on Instagram about how he's not chasing clout. I hope that he has taken the lesson he needs to take from this. Absolutely. All right. Anyway, thank you so much, Adebola, for uh, bringing the breakfast headlines. We'll see you again at 9 a.m. You're welcome. All right. Nigeria's movie industry has again been thrown into mourning following the death of actor Junior Pope on Wednesday night after a boat mishap. The national president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rolas, has banned the production of movies around riverine areas across Nigeria till further notice. As of Thursday afternoon, the search for three persons still missing from the boat accident was still on. News Central's correspondent Austin Azu brings us more details. Junior Pope and some other cast and crew on a movie production he was involved in were returning to Asaba from a movie location in Anam, Anambra State when the mishap occurred. This is obviously not the best of times for the Nigeria film industry that has witnessed a number of deaths of practitioners recently. Nollywood industry practitioners have converged on the bank of the marine waterside at Cable Point in Asaba, waiting for the divers who have gone in search of the remaining three persons involved in the accident. They are hanging on to the slim hope that they will be rescued. One of the survivors gave an account of what happened. He said he was riding in the boat with 11 others when the accident occurred. We got to the middle of the see and coincident we saw a boat and the boat was about dodging us and our own flying boat was about dodging too suddenly we are very close to the boat which is a canoe a normal canoe not a flying boat like ours we saw the canoe guy jumping inside the river just to save his own life. And I swear, our pilot was trying to divert his handle so that we could dodge the canoe, but we don't have that time, we don't have that opportunity, we don't have that, that luck to dodge it. So finally, he clamped on top of the small canoe, and that was how we all tumbled automatically inside the water. National President, Actors Guild of Nigeria, who said the unfortunate death was avoidable, advocated for adequate welfare packages and security of actors and actresses before going on set. He said the producer of the movie has been suspended from working with actors to further notice. We are praying that uh, such incident cannot occur again, more especially as the Guild has taken further step by first of all banning everything concerning filming near the Varine area to your further notice. Owner of the movie said efforts are on in search of the remaining bodies. What happened would have been prevented, but there is one guy there, I think they call his name TC Virus or something, become so, dis so disobedient. He was standing up ringing the bell as if he was consulting something in the middle of the sea. Then even the, the pilot was asking him to sit down. I cannot see the front. He refused. He was attacking everybody that asked him to sit down. How can you cover the person driving? So the, the driver could not see the incoming boat. 
because somebody was blocking him. The search for the remaining bodies is ongoing by the local divers and other professional divers who have gone into the river Niger in search of the bodies. Expectations are quite high that the remaining bodies will be found and thereafter be committed to Mother Earth according to the traditions of the land. In Asaba, for New Central, I'm Austin Azu. Very much, Austin, for that report. Now we have updates on that story. Uh, reports have it from a certain Stanley underscore on top who has been giving updates on the bodies being found. He has reported that the sound guy has been found. Uh, these are still unconfirmed, but we're waiting for official statements. Uh, we do hope that the bodies have been all found and that the families can find some form of closure. Joe, what, something that I saw on social media really hurts me is the fact that there, there were se several people who spoke about certain rituals needing to be done to these bodies because they died in the water and that you can't just take them out without performing certain rituals. Now, someone had shared a handle on, someone had shared a, I didn't even see until the girl had been buried. I think it was a makeup artist. Yeah, the makeup artist. So they said that they were trying to raise money to be able to perform the rituals, but they couldn't even raise enough money to bring her father from Akwaibom to Asaba and then pay for all the logistics involved. So they literally had to bury her in the water. So imagine the double, double jeopardy he's had to face, not only losing his daughter, not having the closure of giving her the burial. First of all, no father should bury their child. But now he has to bury his child, and now he can't bury his child in his hometown. He buries her in a foreign land, in the water. Not in a way that he can come back to say, okay, you know how people find the closure of being able to go to the tombstone of their loved ones? Yeah. He can't have that anymore. And, and you know, it, it's very sad to think that this is happening. I would have hoped that there would have been a way. I, I don't know who we should have held responsible to speak with the community, the members of the community, to try and raise the funds so that they do whatever they need to do and allow the man go back with his daughter and bury her the way he deems fit. It was just a very sad update to hear. And... Honestly, my heart just breaks. I, I've been trying to not look so much at a lot of this news because I've been absorbing, I've been trying not to absorb a number of these emotions because it's very heartbreaking to think. One minute is a life. I went on his page 10 hours after he put the last video. He already was yeah. at the point of death. It's a sad situation, um, sad story. I, I was able to piece together what might have gone wrong. And in that report package by our correspondent, um, Austin Azu, I think it confirms what I already was able to see from yesterday. I mean, there are a lot of persons who are coming on social media and blabbing and talking and talking, but that's what happens because that's what social media has done. Whenever incidences or tragedies like this happen, you now see who they call analysts, both whether you are a professional, whether you're a forensic expert, whether you are police, whether you're not, whether you are the one who fries plantain on the street, everybody is now an analyst of the situation. And people were blabbing and talking neither here nor there. But one thing stood out, and that's what that lady said in the report. She said one of the guys was standing and was ringing the bell and was making noise. And I did see that video as well on social media. Apparently, there was another boat that captured their own boat when that guy was standing and ringing the bell. I the think it's one of the light skinned guy. guy who equally survived. Now, let's put this together. What happened? There was a collision. The boat driver or the rider kept saying, according to what exactly what that lady said, because there was another eyewitness who equally said the same thing, re echoed what the lady said. The driver was saying, Can you sit down? I need to see. Because there is no way you're going to have a collision from a flying speedboat and a canoe, with and, a you canoe didn't see it. and you cannot see it. Mm. These guys have been riding, they've been, they've been, they've been, they, this waterway is like their, their road. They know every nook and cranny, every pathway of that waterway. So it's obvious that there was something that obstructed his view. So those are the things we need to also look at. And I must also attribute this to one word. I think there was carelessness here. Carelessness from, from not wearing your life jacket, Carelessness from playing. They were literally playing on the boat. You need to see those videos. They were jumping, making noise, playing. If I were the, I mean, of course, the, the flying boat, the rider's at the back. He's controlling it from there. So if you stand up, you're blocking him. He's going to be, can you sit? Let me see. So that is one of the issues that you don't need to be a forensic expert to know, oh, this, especially if you drive cars. If you're, if you're, if you're driving your car, for instance, and someone is always at the front, you know, distracting you, 
it's always going to be a problem. And then it happened. I mean, it's sad. We can say all what we want to say. We can analyze from today till tomorrow and so on and so forth. But the truth is we must take something home here. There's a family that's crying now. Three children. There are families that are Exactly. Crying. Three children will no longer have a father. Who's going to cater for them? The AGN needs to sit down and say, okay, fine, let's take care of the home front first. As for this one, I think the producer also needs to, I'm sorry, but she's been blacklisted, but she needs to face the music as well. So I, I, another, another thing... Because right now, if, if, if I'm sorry, sorry to bot in. I'm, I'm also going to say this. If you say it's unfair for them to blacklist the producer, the question I'm going to ask is, is there a contract that was signed? Because that's the only way she could exonerate herself. Is there a contract that was signed that stated that rules and regulations of crossing uh, 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 the river? One, well, ensure your lifeboat. You see, we contracts are very key. So I, I would say that the moment that there's been an exchange of, oh, she has sent you an email with your script or giving you your script and a certain deposit has been paid, there's an assumption of duty of care that the producer owes the um, it owes the the actor but one thing that this has highlighted to us is that nollywood has to look within nollywood has to look within at one the welfare of actors which in many cases has not been prioritized nollywood also needs to look at the low standard of production because if you compare, and I know that Nollywood is a booming movie industry, we're churning out movie in well, weeks. No Every week people are producing, in fact, in one week they've shot like part one, two to three, especially in Asaba and, you know, the eastern part. Yeah. The Nollywood epic scene is doing amazing, but there needs to be structure in the way that they do things. They, I mean, you should go on a movie set, it's quite interesting. I but have. if you do a comparison between Nigeria's movie set and the Hollywood, there's so many things that they don't take into account when prioritizing uh, actors' welfare. I've not yet been to Hollywood, but there's so many things I think about, you know, a Hollywood movie set. But there's so many things I see as an anomaly here that gives me cause for concern. Like, do they prioritize the health and the wellness of these actors in, in terms of, you know, the quality of food that they give them? And there's just so much to look at. I'm hoping that this serves as um, a lesson for... It's just a painful one, but that this it calls for concerns for Nollywood producers, directors to look within and see the ways in which they can improve the standard of their production. For That's movies. right. That's right. I agree. Anyway, let's move on to our next story now. Let's tell you that the Nigerian Naira, of course, has witnessed a significant appreciation in the parallel foreign exchange market, reaching 1,120 Naira. Yay! That's what everybody's saying. Well, to the dollar earlier this week. What prompted Bureau de Change uh, operators to set the purchase price of the dollar at 1,100 Naira and the selling price at 1,120 Naira, thereby earning a profit margin of 20 Naira per dollar. Now, in the official trading window, the Naira strengthened by 1.63% to $1,230.61, up from $1,251.01. Um, on April the 5th. And despite the interesting news, goods and commodities, especially food items, are yet to reduce in price. The Delphi Tree celebration saw some Nigerians complain about food purchase in the North and Middle Belt. And as for the Southwest, the prices are either stagnant, as it was in the past four months, or has further increased. This morning, we're joined by Rasak Fitai, he's a policy strategist and economist. Good morning, thank you very much, and welcome to the show. Many, uh, whilst a number of us are excited about the growth of the Naira, the growth of the strength of the Naira, there are others who say that this is artificial and that in a few months things will revert back to the state of chaos that it was. Is this something to, is this a valid argument and is this something to be worried about? Hi, first, thanks for having me. Um, is this something to be worried about that the currency is appreciating? First, let's look at what has led us to this moment. Uh, and I'll summarize them into four buckets, right? Of, you know, four key actions that the CBN uh, led by Caduceus has taken. The first is that you've seen that he has implemented reforms, right? Uh, which has improved markets, you know, transparency and price discovery. And uh, he has also done a lot of reforms around limiting bank exposure to, to uh, uh, making sure that their dollar exposure is aligned to their deposit structure. And um, 
The second thing I would say that it has done, which has helped uh, with the situation, is is that it has raised interest rates. It has taken a lot of measures to improve liquidity. Uh, you know, restarted market operation at a rate that is more closer to more consistent with the market, right? Which encourages mopping up of uh, of excess now. And also, we've seen that if, you know halted development finance schemes uh, uh, such as the one that has been extended to agricultural sector, which has also helped to, to reduce, you know, uh, excess money. And lastly, we've seen that, you know, people now look forward to the bank, you know, as a guide, uh, as a guide, they look forward to the official rate to guide their FX transaction, uh, suggesting that people now trust uh, the bank authority more than before. However, I think uh, one of the things that has been, been really concerning is that when you look at when the currency appreciation started uh, from the middle of March uh, to today, uh, we've seen that uh, the currency has also, um, that the foreign reserves has also been depleted consistently, you know, losing almost about a billion dollar uh, over that same period. However, uh, there is not enough evidence to, to suggest that the bank um, has been defending her uh, uh, because uh, there is really no data to say, okay, this is where the foreign reserves has been going to. But that's one thing that, that is concerning. And also the fact that um, the other concerning factor is the fact that why crude oil production has increased uh, early in the year. We saw that it went down slightly in February. We suggest that uh, there is a significant risk to crude oil production. It's theft. And uh, what that means is that if uh, uh, if that trajectory continues, um, we might see some reversal, right? Later in the year, back to maybe um, around one four or five. That it's as it were before uh, uh, March, before it started to decline. But just to say that, uh, what would determine what eventually happens is, you know, the ability for the country to address those key factors that could help boost, you know, dollar supply in the long run, right? And what that means is that we need to increase crude production. Make sure we sustain efforts to help test, attract investment, to boost the, the oil production. Uh, so for me, I, I think that is what is really key uh, going forward. Okay. Uh, anyway, for me, it's 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 about the um, the the question that everyone seems to be asking: uh, Why is it that, um, in as much as the dollar is or the naira is gaining its strength, uh, the goods and commodities are not coming down? So it seems like it's, it's a curse, the curse of Nigeria's economy, that whatever goes up never comes down. So is there any explanation to this? And uh, what should those involved in sales or the middlemen, what do you think can be done by the government to ensure that uh, the prices, the regulatory, there's a regulation, especially on the price of commodities? Right, thank you. So first, let me correct the notion that when prices go up, it doesn't come down. And that, that's not true. Um, it's a myth. And there are several evidence to, to support this uh, because, you know, we've seen uh, during the, um, you know, the first recession that happened in 2015 due to price shock, which led to significant inflation. And then uh, from around 2018, when we started to see some, you know, signs of relief, we saw prices of you know, food items and even other items were a bit flat and even came down uh, significantly during that period. And, and this is not something that's not the first time it's happened. It has also happened, you know, in the past. But but the challenge has always been that prices in Nigeria is, you know, uh, quite sticky to remain upward, right? Uh, when, for example, when um, we saw dollar increase, you know, uh, exchange rate increase massively early in the year, right, from about one two to one six. We saw how that was quickly reflected in prices of goods. But when it comes to, you know, exchange rate becoming um, more favorable, uh, or when it comes to raw materials being uh, cheaper, we would see that the reaction uh, of the market is usually uh, a bit lagged, right, slow. And the reason why, you know, businesses do this is that because they are very cautious, uh, because if you look at what has happened in Nigeria for the last three years, there has been so much volatility in exchange rate, there has been so much price instability and uh, unpredictability in, uh, for planning for businesses. And any reasonable and rational business will try to just see if this trend, uh, if this trend is going to be sustainable before they adjust that. And as a result, I would see that prices would come down, but you know, at a slower pace, right? Maybe we could see significant change from like the middle of the year if if we are able to sustain this exchange rate uh, over the next two to three months. 
Uh, however, the other point I want to point is that our inflation is largely driven by domestic factors uh, against what people often think is, is, is due to exchange rate. And, uh, and, and the reason for this is that if, if you look at the what constitute the consumer price index, uh, more than 50% of that uh, is accounted by food. And if you look at food inflation versus imported food inflation, you see that it's higher than imported, suggesting that the factors are largely domestic. Factors such as insecurity has been on the rise, uh, and we've not been able to produce enough food, essentially. And should that persist through this year, uh, you no, know, we are currently in rainy season now. Farmers are planting, uh, but if uh, if the government doesn't do enough to, to ensure that they secure lives, secure these farmers, and uh, ensure they provide adequate support to help them boost production, would say that um, even with all of these efforts that we're seeing, uh, we won't make significant progress. And the last point I wanted to raise is that uh, inflation is still highly vulnerable to other factors, which uh, could actually derail the progress in uh, effort to curb inflation. As we've seen that electricity tariff was just recently adjusted by almost 200%, which will increase production costs significantly for businesses. But more importantly, there is a big elephant in the room, you know, and a uh, fuel subsidy, which nobody is really talking uh -huh. about right now, right? Uh, as got, I've seen that the government has continued to, you know, subsidize for, and should that also be removed, uh, we could see a, a serious spike uh, in inflation. And also beyond this, there are, there are several other underlying, you know, structural factors in Nigeria, you know, uh, behavioral issues that could help, that could, you know, uh, prevent prices from, you know, uh, uh, coming down to, to a level that would have been consistent with the, uh, with uh, you know market dynamics, but notwithstanding, I, I think if we are able to sustain you know the exchange rate gain, if we are able to address issues related to crude oil production, if we are able to tackle insecurity, and uh, if government is able to provide adequate stimulus to uh, critical sectors, right, uh, we, we should begin to see. Uh, better uh, growth prospects, we should be, be able to see inflation come down consistently uh, over the next, um, you know, two years. All right. And uh, how soon are we expected to start seeing an improvement in the area of uh, foreign direct investments in Nigeria? Okay. So for foreign direct investment, you know, from the world, they said direct investment. It's that those investments are usually long term, right? And um, and because they are long term, investors will be looking at several factors. Uh, one of them is, you know, the monetary policy dynamics, capital control, whether it's easy for them to recap, uh, repatriate their capital and all that a critical uh, factor. But there are more important factors that, you know, evidence has shown, suggest are very critical in helping, you know, people to make decisions uh, on whether to invest in the country. And those factors are issues like energy cost, how affordable, how, how, how uh, energy supply and energy cost, which is still very high in Nigeria, uh, and other regulatory issues, access to land, you know, uh, 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 making sure that you know cases are able to be resolved when when businesses have cases, court cases, and all that, which are still very big issues in the country. So I would say that. We may in, we may see some some improvement in foreign direct investment, but I don't see it being as significant uh, as it, it should have been, right? Uh, because even in the past, we haven't done enough when the economy was a bit stable. So for me, I think the focus of this government has to be around how do we attract investment, how do we improve the business environment, how do we lower energy costs uh, oh, right. for for business. And how do we improve the tax environment to uh, make sure that they are not prohibitive to, to business growth? Okay. So for me, those are the factors that are very critical, you know, to, to attract FDI. Thank you so much, um, um, Razak Fetai, for joining us, uh, policy strategist and economist, helping us to clear the air on um, the excitement that Nigerians are indeed uh, having and that feeling and letting them know what is to come. We appreciate your time with us here on Breakfast Central. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's move on to our next story now and tell you that um, in a uh, seemingly you know, entertainment industry, there's a lot of conversation concerning how monies are being spent and used, particularly 
when it comes to artists and artist management. Olive. Absolutely. Now we're talking about Michael Adebayo Olainka, better known by his stage name Ruga, recently broke up with Jones in Well, the record company that made him famous, and he has chosen to discuss the reasons for the breakup. Ruga expressed gratitude to his former record label CEO, The Prince, that's of course a brother to Don Jazzy, for his efforts, but stated that he was unable to extend his contract since the company did not promote his brand to the extent that he desi desired. The dance hall sensation claimed he couldn't take it any longer, and uh, for five more years he couldn't take that, and that his previous company was using his money to support emerging musicians. <laughs> Joining us this morning is Osi Dirisu, music, a music writer and presenter. Uh, he'll be joining us shortly to explore the depth of this conversation. That's right. And looking at that conversation, very key, especially timely in the fact that um, the industry itself, which is the entertainment industry, is equally faced with a lot of economic pressures too, uh, breathing down the neck of every single record label. But guess what? Um, according to, I mean, the research, I did read one recently, it also mentioned that despite the hardship that every uh, industry or sector is facing, Entertainment seems to be the least to face that hardship as well because, I mean, we did see in December a few persons were able to, to host their events and it was still filled up. People still went. So regardless of whatever happens, Nigerians will always want to have a great time. Yeah, because that's the only thing that's giving us joy. Mm. If your government is not giving you joy, go and listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at Ruger's tweet where he shared his sentiments regarding uh, his last record label. He says, as much as I'm very appreciative of the fact that Josephine World introduced me to the world, I just couldn't continue with them because they got too comfortable with the money they were making from me and couldn't push me further as I wanted to be pushed. Was supposed to renegotiate the contract, but I couldn't imagine five years more without action. If you look further into the story, there have been reports of them signing a new artist, uh, have, making him take one bedroom in the boys' quarters <laughs> uh, of their, their, their headquarters or HQ. And then get signing a new female artist, but she coming into a fully furnished apartment and just having a more lavish entrance into the record label. There's so many angles to explore, but conversations about artists, young budding artists and uh, and record labels is an unending one. We'll keep seeing more and more of them. You know, more and more of these conversations will keep happening because there are more talents that need to be explored. The number of them that are willing to sign any contract just because they need an opportunity to showcase themselves. But then two years into the contract, they mm. realized that they actually did a, made a mistake signing that contract. So I think the advice would be to any record label or to any artist, incoming artist, uh, uh, young artist trying to find their feet in the entertainment industry, keep putting your work out, keep pushing yourself on social media, and when the right record label comes, they'll offer you a contract. Make sure. Mm. Make sure mm. that you get a lawyer to mm. look at your contract. Mm. I know we say this thing over and over again, but we sound like a broken record. Make sure, because the truth is, your sister went to school, but she cannot read in between the fine lines and sometimes point out the underlying clauses that might be there to serve as a cage to you. And this is not speaking about Ruger's case in particular. It's just talking about what we see. There's always this fallout between artist and record label. Get a lawyer. Even when the record label provides you a lawyer, get an independent lawyer to look through your, your documents. Yeah, but it's easier said than done. Very, very easier said than done. Because for an artist, you are at a state of hunger. Yeah, just you in the state of, let me use the words that are being used today. Compared to what we used to say 20 years ago, you want blue. So you are eager. You want to, you want to, you want to make it. So someone gives you a contract. Okay, let's take for instance, someone picks you up. You live, you live in one of these suburbs in Lagos or in Abuja. And someone picks you up there and says, come, I'm going to give you a room. It's a room, a room self-contained. You're going to stay there. You have AC in that room. Not just that, you also have breakfast and dinner. And then he tells you every month you would be getting 50,000 naira. Every month. You had nothing. And then there's a car provided for you. And that car will take you everywhere. And then your dream, that talent of singing to everyone, you're going to also have it. You think about it, you, you, you put one and two together. The time you have to go to the lawyer, the lawyer will tell you, no, don't take this. It is the artist that comes back to the label and says, please, damn my lawyer, I've signed. <laughs> and then life You're goes right. on. 
you know but but the thing the bosses should also know is when you when you have a, a lengthy contract like that for the artist you should be able to also ensure that you you don't you don't you don't renege on your promises so sometimes they're not going back on their promises what the artist signed but then the artist yeah. realizes oh i am bigger than i thought i was going to get and this is no longer suitable for the person of my class. But, but that's life now. You signed. That's life. So you have to wait out you, your contract. You, you come in as a you come in as, as, as a rookie. As a rookie, and then you've grown to be a professional. You should be treated as a professional. You know. So these are the these so are the maybe the appeal should have. also be to record labels because whilst we understand that they're even there for business, it's not charity. They're there to make money. But I think that the, the one thing we can ask is that they be fair in the in the contracts. They be fair. I think that uh, there are sometimes there should be provision for these contracts to be renegotiated maybe after three years. As opposed to, well, five years is usually what a number of them do, but record labels should be fair. Anyway, let's move it should away be fair. From, it should be fair. from the conversation about record labels to talk about something that the whole country has been focusing on. The federal government plans to build the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway at a total cost of 4 billion naira per kilometer, not the 8 billion naira per kilometer that former Vice President Atiku Abubakar allegedly stated. This means the project would cost 2.8 trillion naira in total. This information was disclosed by the Minister of Works, David Umahi, and the Minister also disputed assertions that the project did not adhere to the proper procurement procedure, asserting that the contract was given on the basis of counterfunding rather than the widely held belief that it was a public-private partnership. And uh, that's the update that we have there. Well, the People's um, uh, Democratic Party's presidential candidate for the general election of 2023, Atika Bobaka, uh, indeed questioned last week uh, President Bola Metinibu's uh, purported decision to award the contract to Gilbert Chagori's high tech without competitive bidding, and he dared the president to reveal the entire cost of the Lagos Calabar Highway project. Well, don't forget, too, as well, that um, um, the Minister of Works, Sumai, explained that despite the soaring cost of materials in the construction industry due to commodity price inflation, and supply chain disruptions, the ministry is uh, committed to prudence, uh, promising to reveal the true costs. However, Omai confirmed the project would be completed within eight years, stating that with the use of concrete pavement on the four-lane carriageway, the project costs four billion naira per kilometer. He also explained that although 1.06 trillion naira was appropriated, the full amount had not been disbursed. Uh, so um, you can see the graphic representation of where uh, it's going to start from and where it's going to all the way. It uh, starts from Lagos and then, of course, um, straight up uh, to Calabar, where it will stop. We've talked about this this week, but this uh, also clarifies that um, it's not working. You know, it's, it's, it's not working in terms of the figures and, and what was said initially and what is now being said. But then again, there's a form of confidence that the minister has indeed instilled in Nigerians that, listen, this is the amount, this is what we're going to pay, this is what's going to happen, and it's going to take eight years, eight full years to complete this project. And that's Absolutely. exactly what we're seeing as well. There's also the conversation about competitive bidding, which Alaji Atiku Abubakar had brought up as to why exactly they give this to Shaguri, why did they give this to high tech, without giving the option for others to... Uh, bid competitively for this you know there were other issues that were raised as to exactly how much this cost why is it being done now he did say that the plan had been gotten by the current president at the time that he was governor that's why the past two administrations could not work on it because that was part of the argument it was like oh he just got into power recently how was he able to make this happen in the past how many months seven months when they're saying the past two administrations had done nothing on it so i think the response to that would be that they didn't have the plan and that the current president had it when he was governor. So yes, there's still uh, several reactions concerning this. Oh, some people also asked why exactly is it starting from Eco-Atlantic? But he said it's a Lagos Calabar, not Calabar Lagos, and the point zero is coincidentally is Lagos Atlantic. It wasn't intentional, but it, I mean, it's coincidental that it starts from Lagos Atlantic. But yeah, that's uh, the update to that story, but I'm sure that there'll be more. There's also the landmark case as to, you know, they've talked about that, you know, they've talked about why why exactly are there uh, conversations about possible demolitions of buildings in landmarks? So, um, yeah. All right. Anyway, let's, let's go back to um, the initial discussion, which was um, um, the entertainment story. We do have joining us um, O.C. Dirus, who joins us live this morning. Hi, O.C., good morning to you. Can you uh, hear us? Hi, can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can. 
All right, so uh, initially before you joined, we had a conversation uh, concerning what's been going on with the music industry, entertainment and the economy. And of course, what bosses should know on a Friday. So can you speak to us uh, what the story about Ruga and uh, the music bosses are indeed going through as we speak? Um, basically, I, from where I'm seated, from my perspective, I would say it's more or less... Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, on a lot of things are on set. You understand? I'm not privy to the contract. Um, you know, I don't know what went down, and I'm also a friend to Ruga. You know, by virtue of being an owner personality, and also a friend to uh, you know Jones and as well. We all work in the same ecosystem. Uh, but what I do believe is, you know, at the end of the day, things like this, when they come to social media, it gives uh, you know a lot of uh, it gives. It gives a foundation to a lot of people to inter interpret it in whatever ways that they want to interpret it, you know, and everything. And I do believe that, you know, as an artist, once you leave a record label or when you are on the, uh, when you are exiting like a certain situation and you feel like, you know, there are certain things that you don't have, uh, you know, clarity on, I do believe that, you know, you can be able to, uh, find recompense in, uh, you know, by doing the right thing, which is either seeking redress in the court of law or, uh, you know, getting your lawyers to actually just go through the fine print. Sometimes bringing it on social media doesn't, you know, from my perspective, it's not you coming to say, okay, you know what, I want clarity on these things. It's sometimes just saying things because uh, you want to be able to get, you know, uh, certain traction or something. So, yeah. All right. Um, so it's not a really great idea that he's brought this to social media. How do you foresee that this might impact his career? He's talked about doing a number of big shows this year and doing a number of uh, touring around the world. Do you think that this might negatively impact his career in any way? No, I don't believe so, uh, you know, because I think, uh, you know, the music industry is more liberal right now. The music is getting uh, directly to the fans. Uh, before, we used to have, uh, you know, the f very few tunnels, which are TV, radio. And right now, we have social media. We have DSP. So uh, right now, as long as the song is good and, you know, the prom uh, promotional plans are set in place, songs would definitely get to um, get to the final listeners. Uh, but, you know, the way the industry is structured, you know, here in Nigeria and you know, everywhere in the world, uh, there are people that might want to lowball you. There are people that you know have I was called right now setting loyalties to you know certain people and people that believe that or oh, you shouldn't have done uh, you know XYZ or anything and uh, yesterday he came out too you know after going on that social media rant to you know he did a live on Instagram to actually apologize for uh, you know uh, talking about what he talked about and everything so I believe that you know whatever it is will be resolved amicably and I don't believe that it will actually just affect his career he's on uh, he's about to release a you know a joint EP with Benson he's dropped two songs already in uh, 2024 so I think he's on the come up you know and everything then he would also understand that now that he's out of you know that jonesing uh, world structure and is on his own right now so they're saying things that he he too as a record label as a record label or an entertainment outfit uh you know uh boss uh, they're saying things that he will now need to do for himself you know promotions putting your music out there so uh like i said i don't believe that it, it will affect his career if everything that he needs to do as regards getting the music directly to uh, the listeners are being done so yeah oh see what can we do to ensure that this doesn't become uh, something that is, I mean, it's become a norm in a way. We almost always expect that when artists are leaving their record label, a lot of the time is amidst chaos or disagreements. How can we put in systems and structures that would ensure that both the artist and the record label feel properly catered to? And when they are parting, they're parting on amicable terms. Um, fine print, actually. I mean, before contracts are signed, make sure lawyers get involved. And uh, if there are any ambiguities or any issues, you know, uh, there are ways to actually uh, remedy this. Uh, you know, there are the courts and everything. And I do believe that uh, most times when one party comes out to say, uh, you know, I've been wronged, you know, in this way, um, the other party doesn't really say anything. So I believe that in the spirit of transparency, uh, you know, every party involved to actually come and say their side of the story. So everything is laid out there in black and white. Like any other contract, you understand, uh, the music industry, or the music labels and the artists are not, you know, any different. So what I do believe is as long as there's a contract and it's spelled out clearly in black and white and every and every individual going into this contract understands their obligations and, you know, what is required of them and, you know, what they're supposed to do pending the, the duration of these contracts, I don't think there should be any issues. So uh, what really causes issues is when, you know, uh, 
party A or party B are not living up to the expectations as stated, uh, you know, in the recording contract. As long as everything is, like I said, it's not ambiguous, it's in white and black. I don't think we should be seeing, you know, a lot more of this um, of these issues as regards artists, uh, you know, coming out to see they're, going, they're getting the shorter end of the stick uh, when they're leaving their record labels. It's been a minute since we heard, uh, you know, anything like this. It shows you that the industry is getting more structure. And uh, with the uh, with the entry of a lot of international players into uh, the music industry scene, we are seeing proper contracts being drawn up. Uh, you know, artists having lawyers, people looking through everything, making sure that, okay, you understand what your obligations are before you actually go into this contract. So, like I said, so I believe that as long as, you know, the artist and the record company, you know, are spelling out what they want from each other and they are come to an agreement and he's signed and it's not in bad faith. So I think we see less and less of, you know, things like this. So if you're required over a two, three year period to be able to say, OK, uh, give me like three projects and a uh, record label is supposed to, uh, you know, uh, invest a certain amount of money uh, into promoting this, uh, you know, uh, those projects. And, you know, uh, the recoupables and what is uh, what is due to this artist is stated, like I said, clearly on paper. You know, there should be any issues. Like I said, as long as, uh, you know, you read the fine, fine prints, you get your lawyer and you sign and you know that it's in good faith. So and everybody, you know, meets up to the obligations. We should see less and less of these issues. All right. Anyway, I wish we had more time so we can carry on this conversation at length. But then again, we look forward to have you join us again. Thank you so much, no uh, Rosie for joining us. Thank you, Jonathan. Welcome to Breakfast Central. If you're just tuning in, please ensure that uh, you get your phones ready. We'll open the phone lines. And before you call in, do well to turn down the volume of your TV set so we can hear you clearly. We'll be looking into the front pages of the paper, seeing what some of the biggest stories are. And uh, joining us to look into the story is Sheriff uh, Dekoya. Uh, he's a newspaper, he's a public affairs analyst, and he'll be joining us to explore these conversations. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, let's quickly go to this Nigerian newspaper. On the front page of this Nigerian newspaper, the big story, Chibok. Ten years after pupils still at high risk, Human Rights Watch raises the alarm. Over 1,600 students abducted since 2014 across northern Nigeria, says group, tasks federal government on implementation of Safe Schools Initiative. A number of boats mishap, three missing as police probe criminal liability in cause of junior pope and others' death. Dosumu Market, six buildings collapsed, 16 others impacted by fire, says Lasema. IMF says inflation to further drop in 2024. ONU defended Nigeria's unity, advocated peace. Tinumbu, Buhari, Akpabi, others mourn ex-minister Bunaya ONU, who unfortunately uh, passed. And uh, there's been lots of people who are sharing moments and memories about him and others. But may he so rest in peace. And let's get into the first story. That would be, of course, Chibok 10 years after. Interestingly, on, as we mark the 10 years uh, anniversary, the most recent, in the month of March, we saw a number of abductions in Kaduna State. We had Kuriga, uh, LA Primary School, and the number of kidnaps that had happened. Now, the Human Rights Watch is raising the alarm that these kids, pupils, are still at high risk. Well, um, you want me to react yes, to that? Go ahead. Oh, okay, so it's, it's um, simple and it's open. The reality stares at us directly um, on a daily basis. We understand the fact that um, what we have as challenges in Nigeria is indeed um, a systemic um, crisis, a systemic failure. The fact that there was an attack in Chibok that made the global headline 10 years ago does not mean the crisis and the, pro the troubles are over. And Chibok is not the only place in Nigeria that is exposed, that faces the possibility or the likelihood of being attacked. On a daily basis, several communities, several um, local settlements face this. Now, let us go back and take some steps away from the problem and look directly at the possible solutions. Our security architecture that has been designed decades ago needs to be revisited. And Nigeria is growing by the day we are over 200 million people. Most times, not all our crises are political. Some of them, of course, would have um, angles to their solutions coming from the political side. But truly, truly, they are huge and enormous. 
development comes with quite a number of challenges and this is one of them you grow the economy may not be looking so good it's a developing growing and a developing nation so a lot of people would want to find ways to earn a living legal or illegal so what then do we need to do the state then needs to rise up to the occasion you do not just construct roads alone hospitals won't do or the issue security side by side so that's why you see when some states invest heavily in hams and all of that you guess why are we buying a lot of guns we need guns so that we can sleep well at night but gun is not usually the first thing how much of education have we sent to these people how much of um, uh, uh, impactful engagement have we brought to the table so chibok is not the only neighborhood that is at large we, we saw quite a number of flashes of attack across uh, several parts of nigeria even down to some part of southwest we saw the uh or was shooting about two years ago or whatever so this is the tell us that i mean that's even you're taking it too far just last not mm -hmm. up to a month yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm just telling i'm just tonight. trying to tell you that that's not the only only region that is at large when it comes to crisis and troubles even within lagos there are elements of instability but because lagos has actually risen to a level with you know state intervention in police we know policing is a federal responsibility but the architecture needs to be revisited enough of all of this how many police officers do we have how many of our um, land borders are well manned and you really can't point the figures at um, the sitting government but we need to call them to attention and tell them these are the things that we've seen before you came into power do we can't keep running this you know you can't do the same thing and over and over and expect different results you that said is, that you said that not all our problems are politicized do you think that insecurity as a challenge is one of those that are, that isn't politicized or do you think it's a political problem it is a political problem okay. but it did not we didn't arrive at that security problem from a political angle it's a growth issue you know if you have had a hundred thousand police when the population was 50 million do you get so are we increasing the policing are we increasing the security personnel are we rewriting or redesigning the security architecture as we go on so we should that, that was why i said we shouldn't just concentrate on number of roads number of schools and all of that these parts of, uh, of our existence needs requires adequate attention as well so if we are okay i i think nigeria is one of the least policed states in the world so if that is the case why then do we cry for when we we fall short of issues around policing all right let's move away from this nigerian newspaper to the next one which is the guardian newspaper and on the front page of the guardian newspaper let's take uh, that one it says fresh concerns as youth get high on <laughs> on feces <laughs> not meg <laughs> illicit substances this is ridiculous i've heard of the feces one before in short, the one I hear is that they 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 bust your your your, suck your away. Suck away. Yes, you know, yeah. that's they bust it so they could have access to it, the sewage and all that. The sewage, yeah. And then they have rubbers that they melt. But then again, I I, I always love the Guardian for one thing that they do. They don't just um, you know put the story out there. They take time to to gather data. That's what they do. So the data here says seizure of assorted illicit drugs. 1,606,799.09 kilogram. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm sure this data must have also come from um, um, NAFTA. And DLEA as and well. DLEA and on yeah. all of that. And um, got arrest, 13,664 13, so far. Uh, offenders charged to court, imagine, 5,570. 5, so what happened to, if my calculation is right, about 7,000 plus. Yeah. Uh, convictions, 3,412, mm -hmm. meaning that out of the 5,000 that have actually gone uh, charged to court, only 3,412. That's about 60%. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Not bad. Yeah. That's uh, a bit, that's speedy. Uh, but hard times for addicts uh, because the crackdown is indeed, like we call it, Sunday, Sunday tonic. We get that every now and then from the NDLEA. Afeniferi urges Southwest governors to uh, get federal government grants for farmers. Lagos Calabar to be completed in eight years at four billion naira per kilometer. Top four banks earn eight trillion in twelve months, record three point five trillion naira FX again. Minister apologizes for jive on electricity consumption culture cheap tariffs when he said, "You people put on your freezer and leave it till the next yes. day and come back. You don't know how to consume power." But then again, he says, "I'm sorry." That's why he's carrying power bank up I'm and down. I'm sorry. 
He may not have said it the way I said it, but you know, you could feel the pain and mm. the sadness. He, he used to start to say it. You know, if there's anything we've said that we shouldn't have said, we are he sorry. Didn't say about I. I am sorry. Say we. Okay, we. Yes, yes. He said if there's anything that we we said that we shouldn't have said. But who said? I think we have said that is considered offensive. But who said? We are it? sorry about that. Who said it? Uh, Was it the we that said it? <laughs> no, don't put us inside your apology. <laughs> 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 it's a Nigerian culture. We don't have to apologize. We don't have to apologize. It's just saying, no, I said this, I shouldn't have say it, said it, and I take responsibility for it. I'm sorry. Because you can't be telling people that it's because they are leaving their freezer <laughs> on for days. So after cooking um, a goosey soup that gets bad very easily, I should be rationing two you hours know, of. You of, know, of, uh, I don't think the minister, I don't think the minister has, 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 has cooked. Okra, Ogbono, Egusi, Ewedu, and vegetable, Afang. And then he got spoiled in three days. I don't think his food gets spoiled. And you have planned how you eat yeah. that soup for like the next week. And then it gets spoiled. Also, and everything gets bad. Anyway. Like you said, we, we don't know how to apologize. Maybe, you know, it's the same way we apologize in Nigeria. We, we, Come on, we, we always say, ah, Have you eaten? Are you, have you eaten? Come on, eat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mommy, catch your sub. You know, and something like that. So that's <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway, I well, like your well, reaction to this. Well, I, 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 I think, um, like you said, the Guardian front page is loaded, and um, there are quite a number of things that will interest you here. So um, we, we have 13,664 arrests, 5,570 um, found their ways to court, and um, out of these numbers, about 60%, 3,412 uh, got um, conviction. So we then need to ask ourselves, let's begin from <clears throat> um, why do we think our youth are turning to illicit drugs? Why do we think they really want to get drugs? Why? You know, drugs are acidity, tranquilizers, and things that, yes, turn out to help them fight depression. So how did they get into the point of depression in the first instance? So, you see, sometimes when you bring any issue to the table, mm. there are several routes to that issue. It is not always or usually a one, a monorail issue. If this goes beyond just drugs or consumption. It has psychological, society, sociological, the economic factor to it. How many families do we have right now in Nigeria that are still compact, connected and still together for their mother, children, or extended or however you want it. Quite a number of our young ones pick up their training from the streets. And those you do not offer, you can't offer what you do not have. Now, economic issues, social economic issues are thrown the basis of the family that's chattered it in Nigeria. Gonna do this when father goes out to Ozu, the mother is probably at home or there's a shop nearby or something. So she keeps an eye on the children. But right now, we've got both parents hustling. And when they come back at the end of the day, what they bring is major. It really cannot turn around the fortune of the family. So that child is left at the mercy of the society. The moment that guy, uh, Sir John a, or Sir Piero, okay. sends him on errand, he leaves the boy with the, the remainder of the phone. Take 1,000, buy me Refno, buy me loud, buy me this. And he comes back with 200 naira change. And he keeps it, keep it. So the only other thing that that guy is keeping is higher than what he gets from his home. Mm. In his home, the father comes with 2,000, and they're about nine. So you divide 2,000 by nine. So what gets to him may be 200, and he gets 200 for 10 minutes around. So he finds solace in that guy. Who is that guy is the question. Mm -hmm. Where has that guy gotten his relevance? So because once you get relevance, you are able then to build a castle, no matter how small it is. It grows because it is functional and aspirational. Now, taking that away from that small street and bring it to a bigger stage, say states, community, and all of that. These guys live aspirational lives. And we see all of this in some of our musical videos where people exhibit the use of drugs, loud, the cannabis and the likes. These guys are nothing but role models. If I have my way, if I work with the Minister of um, Cult Culture, yeah, Culture Information yeah. or the DG National Retention, you really can't force people you can't. We've gotten to a level where you now need to find a way to negotiate, engage, and find critical solutions. So we need to look for the line of best fit. You bring up, we, we have about um, 20 top artists in Nigeria who are culture shapers. Yes, and I'm really glad. You need to forget to... the fact that you think you can force them. If you bring Bonaboy, Whiskey, the Lamy, the and the like, bring them to a room, show them the Indies, and tell them how much impact they have on the youth. 
I'm and sure why they need to turn the way around? Meeting. Do you get? I mean, they made sure Naya Mali an ambassador. NDLA they said they did him. not. Oh. Uh, they didn't. Oh, they okay. They didn't. Uh, even if they uh -huh. had, they uh -huh. probably would have had a, a strategy behind it. Maybe the strategy didn't go well. Yeah. So, leaving that at the level of the fact that the social, the, the social economic issue is pushing a lot of things on the street now, why do they then need to get high? An average Nigerian youth want to live a flamboyant life. Mm -hmm. So, when you overthink things, then what happens to your mind when you can't achieve them? You go depressive. So the best way to manage that is to escape. So a form of escape is to take all of these sedatives. So the moment that thing is active in them, they are disengaged from the reality. You know, escape is good. Yeah, you probably seated on your desk for two hours. You need to take escape. You take a walk. Escape is good when it is on the positive mm. side. But you know, when you take a bottle of alcohol or two bottles, it probably may be a form of escape. You sleep off. Mm. You forget everything you are owing. Friday, TGIF. But when you, yeah, when you wake up in the morning, your landlord will come knocking. So the, 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 the walls of part of escape is fatal, fatality. When mm. people think uh, committing suicide is a best way of escaping their worries. So now, coming back straight to illicit drugs, it is a currency that is fast spreading. And, it's, and just to mention that, it's not like we're trying to paint Nigeria with a bad brush because the truth is this is something that happens in the West. I feel like oh, it's yeah. even oh, we've yeah. borrowed a lot of this from the West. I'm looking yeah. here and seeing the stats. I'm seeing quick some quick facts here. This one says 46.8 million. That's 16.7 percent Americans aged 12 and older battle a substance abuse disorder in the past year. So the numbers here are not also looking very exciting. Mm -hmm. But ju just to mention that it's not something peculiar to Nigeria. But the challenge is that abroad. They have the systems to be able to help these young people who are dealing with addictions. They have rehab. They have access to mental health counselors, therapists, you know, and cognitive behavioral therapy uh, uh, specialists. We, we don't have a lot of that here. And the ones that we have are very expensive. So it feels like we are really in a very complicated uh, situation. I'm sure you, you saw the BBC Eyes documentary they did that time on, uh, uh, I think, it, Tramadol, right? Yeah. And it's an unending thing. House parties in Lekki. Once you go and they've given you a bottle of drink, you're not sure. Don't just drink what you're not sure of because yeah. let, let, you let can me, drink and lose consciousness. Let, let, let's also, let's also, I mean, just for, for, for fear of time, let's also look at a big story in front of The Guardian here that yes. um, calls for attention. Inquiry on Okoma killings. Um, journalists barred as stakeholders worry about fairness. fairness. We, we've had this conversation this week and this is very worrisome. Um, we did have the communications... Um, 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 special ad uh, advisor uh, to the governor of Delta State joined us here live last week and he did say that the con uh, conversations are ongoing between the governor, the military and of course the people of uh, Okwama. Sadly, the people of Okwama, some of them who had to escape before the, um, the reprisal attacks are actually in the bush and they said they were calling on President Tinubu to come to their aid. But then again, it was mentioned that inquiries will be set up to investigate what the situation truly was. And now we see this story that um, the journalists were not allowed or are not allowed to join uh, the inquiry. Remember too that the governor has not been allowed to go there. Well, let's rephrase that because we had a representative uh, from Delta State Government last week and he said nobody can stop the governor from going where well, he, he hasn't wants to gone go there. To. But there have been concerns as to the fact that it doesn't feel like the citizens of the citizens of Okwama have been prioritized. Because whilst we totally, wholeheartedly, and completely condemn the attack on our, on our soldiers, our armed forces should not have been treated in the way that they were treated. Not just killed, but killed in a very inhumane, disrespectful manner, right? But then, it wasn't the whole community that committed it. There were people there who were innocent. When we had a representative here talk to us about it, he said that right now the focus, the focus of Delta State is to investigate into uh, the, the military weapons and to ensure that they recover the weapons of the military. And I said, so is that more important than the citizens who are most likely in the bush right now trying to find them? Because they're innocent. One innocent mama will be there, not knowing that um, something is happening and they are killing people and they're raising down communities. They said they weren't reprisal attacks. But we're seeing photos and videos on social media. How do we get the correct information out if they don't allow journalists there? Well, uh, we, we, my, my heart goes out to those who have lost their lives across the two sides of the divide, the community and the military. Nobody wishes for that to happen. Nobody will ever pray or embrace such. But the reality is, you know, there's this Yoruba adage, and I guess it's an African adage that says, when your neighbor consumes 
dirty ants, you had better stop them because it's um, grizzling sounds overnight won't allow you to mm. take a rest. You wreck. You get so that captures the fact that those who got involved in shooting and killing of the soldiers are members of the community. Now they've brought pressure, tension upon the entire community, which is bad. That's one. Then two, for the governor, it, it probably might have gotten security reports that stops him from going there. That does not in any way necessarily mean he is barred from getting them with security reports so that things or situation doesn't get out of hand. That's one. Two, um, the fact that they said journalists are barred from getting there. There are meetings, there are conversations where every, every fact must be poured. You don't know who would bad meetings. There are ways you manage such conversations so that issues don't get out of hand before they are strategically managed. If you allow people into such meetings, the moment you say A, everybody hears the A. So it probably may not be um, totally the part of um, training away fairness. It probably may just be, oh, you, you've got what you want to say. Come say it there. We are protecting you. No journalist is capturing it. Say what you need to say. Of course, let us wait until when the inquiry brings the report. Right. Then we'll know where, what exactly the story brings. So it, it, it's a two-way thing. What they've done to the military, I like the fact that you captured it and say it is extremely humane. It is disrespectful to every one of the soldiers and disrespectful to Nigerian, Nigerian army, disrespectful to Nigeria. But we need to understand the fact that when you do certain things, there are repercussions for it. Nobody wishes that these repercussions should be met on those who are not involved. I saw about two, three weeks ago, names that were listed, um, the wanted ones. One of them was even the community leader. Yeah, the king was he himself. He said he has, yeah. not, even, he has not even been able to seven. get to the community. So it shows, it shows how old style the community has been. So ever since the God staff of office, he's not been able to get there. So maybe this would be the solution, the lasting solutions to the people. I need to bring this. You know, we spoke about Chibok the other time. We said our security architecture needs to be overhauled. That may be another angle to that. Yeah. Our police may not have the capacity to face some of our internal crisis. And that's exactly why you see military policing, state getting policing, involved in it. Absolutely. Okay, let's quickly take the Vanguard newspaper as our final paper this morning and see what the stories on the Vanguard are. On the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, uh, the big story there says, Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, opera over costs as federal government proposes 3,000 Naira per toll gate. <laughs> hey! Okay, well, it is well. <laughs> it is I, not I, I won't believe this story. Though. I don't want to believe I it don't as want well. To it. Let me just break it down. Cars to pay 1,500 naira, okay. trucks 5,000 naira, according to Mahi. Says landmark and resorts and jobs will not be affected, property owners to be compensated. It's a highway to fraud and waste, says Atiku. Federal government not tired of inflicting pains on Nigeria, and says Lab Labour Party. Any toll above 300 naira unacceptable, unacceptable according to COP. Luxury buses, uh, operators kick. They say passengers will bear the brunt. Well, there's so many reactions to this. Let's move further. Uh, we have Okwama. Army invades another Delta community, arrests 10, raises homes. Are you seeing? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, Wigwe, why Ogubanja's family sued charter company over helicopter crash? And this is a follow-up to the story about Herbert Wigwe uh, and his family and the unfortunate crash. They have sued the helicopter uh, company. Minister apologizes for saying Nigerians keep freezers on due to low tariff. Osimen close to accepting Paris Saint-Germain's 17 billion naira position offer. <laughs> How is he saying? <laughs> it will collect it too, sorry. Manufactured goods imports rise 269% to 9 trillion naira. Exports decline. And uh, Tinumbu, Jibrin, Kalu, Uzodima, Obi, others mourn as Ubonaya Ubo dies. And uh, final story, Odili declares Fubara leader of PDP in Rivers. We have Dr. Abati calling from Akwaibom. Good morning. Thank you very much. And uh, please go ahead with your comment. Oh, All right. Unfortunately, okay. we've lost the call. And uh, final, st okay, no, I think there are two more stories I didn't take yet. Junior Pope, how Fanta money I sprayed in the river saved me, according Come to a survival. Um, yes, I think that's about it. Anyway. anyway. But yes, let's talk about this likely toll. So this as quickly as possible. Um, um, this toll, do you think that this is a, a, a fair proposition? Well, we, I, I think we are over-anticipating things. Mm -hmm. Let's even get the road ready. Okay. Right. 
And by the time we get the rule ready, we probably would then be able to say it is justified or not justified. All right. You recall vividly when Nigerians kicked, when we were proposing, the government proposed the Lekki Ikoyi bridge and they said it to be told. People kicked and all of that. He came and people paid too because we enjoyed it. He gave us shorter routes. You you spent shorter time on the road. It is small. But, 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 but was it with the law? Oh, definitely. Oh, Within the law that you, you told how, how many tolls are you supposed to have? I, I'm, X, we, we, I, I am not holding brief for the government right now. Yeah, yeah. We do uh, not have the full uh, um, report or review of the um, the highway. Let's see. Let's wait and see. That's yeah. Yeah. Point. Let's, that's let's wait and see. see. It will amount to, but thank you for joining us this morning to review the papers. You're welcome. This is still Breakfast Central. We have some very exciting news. Have you heard of the new Breakfast Extra? I bet you haven't, but you will after this break. You're welcome back to Breakfast Central. Now, good news. We do have something that everyone's talking about. You check on the streets, the billboards are talking about it, the blogs are talking about it, the newspapers are talking about it. And here on Breakfast Central, we are talking about it. It's a phenomenon called Breakfast Extra. What exactly is Breakfast Extra? You'll find out in a bit. I'm joined by the delectable voice. He's a journalist per excellence. The one and only Mazino Appeal. It's good to have you, Mazino. All, all that for me. Yeah, but you're not alone. <laughs> I'm going to allow Joe to do the honors of introducing the other person who's joining us. Well, I'm joined by um, the brightest uh, lady on television, brighter than the sun. Amazing, with uh, a very beautiful diction that could get every single person scampering, not for safety, <laughs> but for the want of heart. She is beautiful, and most importantly, she would get your morning starter on a very, very bright note. Judith Atibi. I do not have any words to describe her. <laughs> <laughs> you both are officially. So, thank you so much. Thank you very Joe. much, guys. That is so kind. That's yeah, the first time you. anybody it's described okay. you as the rising sun. Huh? Hey, let me look at Kano. She's looking like the sun. Let me, let me, you, know, you and oh, Kano oh, have some uh, discussions to make. <laughs> <laughs> but good morning, guys, and thank good you so much for having it's us. Great so to have you. Thank you very so much. much. You're both here. welcome for the very first yes. time to Breakfast thank Central. Thank you. We're as excited as you. We are very excited to have you. But we've been hearing about Breakfast Extra. Everybody's talking about it. What exactly is this breakfast ex extra that everyone is making a fuss about? So mm. Joe said something this morning, extra, extra, read all about it. Only this That's time, it. see all about it. <laughs> so, so this weekend, we're going to be starting something that we're hoping is going to be everybody's addiction from now on. Um, the news is always very doom and gloom. We know that. And often you guys never have enough time to talk about everything that happens. So we're hoping that inside of the weekend, we could get a bit more time, a bit more personality. Mm hmm and of course, hey, give you guys the opportunity to also tell us what you think about what's going on inside of Nigerian politics, Africa, and of course the world. Mm. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Judith, uh, can you also take us through what the concept for Breakfast Extra would be like? Yeah, I, I mean, for us, it was uh, when we were you know, sitting down and thinking about it, one of the first things that was, came to mind was that um, what you guys were doing here in Central was you know, divine, and the viewers wanted it to be extended past now to even the weekend. And so we thought, how then can we incorporate the elements that are on the show as well as our personalities as well and also give a, a little bit of off to it. So that's really the idea <laughs> and the extra on breakfast. So it's, uh, like he said, the blend of the news as well. Uh, no more doom and gloom, but also it's going to be very insightful discussions. We're going in depth into the stories this time. We're bringing all voices on the table. There's also, you know, uh, a part that we're very excited about. We've been doing this, working on this, for a very long time. It's called The Big Story. It's one of the segments mm -hmm. that we're very, very excited for. The Big Story has, it precedes a timeline where we go in depth into how the story had broken the entirety of the week. And then we now get to bring all sides on the table to go in depth and have the conversation. So The Big Story is very exciting for us. That's what we're looking forward to. Another we're looking forward to is The Big Report. Now we have, I mean, of course, we know that um, the fire incident that broke, we had Adisha Wadushoga, who was on the ground. Our fire know, reporter. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> the decimal fire. So it was, it was very, you know, to see, we're going to, you know, bring them in and go behind this the, the Can news I tell something about that? And just yeah. talk about it, yeah. About, and just about, go in about depth. the reports that, mostly here at, at New Central, there's always a story behind the report that we never really get to tell yeah. or we never really get to see. So we're hoping that we can actually get the reporters on ground uh, that were on ground in the studio and talk to them, have them tell us exactly, well, 
those bits that didn't make it inside of the report, mm -hmm. and also what their own personal experience was like, who they were talking to, what the sweat running down their face yeah. felt like, and all of that. Yeah, yeah it's it's. We're yeah. looking forward to that. As Very well. important. Uh, that's what matters as, as well. All right. All right. So um, I think another question we should ask now is uh, why exactly these anchors have been chosen. Let's. Uh, I mean, they could have picked anybody, anybody in the world <laughs> to be those hosts. So why exactly were you chosen? And what I'm asking, in essence, is for you to basically share with us your journey into ah. media. Oh, good goodness. Um, you know, you want to go first? My, yeah. my journey dovetails into your journey, so I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna tell my journey. Um, <laughs> I started, I started uh, media with Mr. Johansson here. <laughs> 20, <laughs> 20 years 20 ago. Years. <laughs> Am I that old? Yes, you are. Well, Joe is relatively, relatively, you're getting there. We'll be welcoming you to the fourth floor. Oh, we have already. No, he is. We're not discussing no, aging yet. Please no, do not no. come on my show. Not there yet. Do not, not come on my yet. show and put so my counting down. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, um, media started for me 20 years ago. Um, I've done sports, I've done um, entertainment, I've done television from before now. And now this is my dream. I think I'm the most content person ever when it comes to profession. Because I've actually done everything that I set out to do from the very beginning. And this is the, um, might be the culmination of everything that I've been working to do uh, all my uh, professional life. So uh, the news is very passionate. I'm very passionate about the news. And I'm looking forward to giving a different blend of that news. Uh, I'm hoping I don't get us in trouble. Hopefully you won't do that. <laughs> Your turn, but yeah, um, so far so good. 20 years down the line, I think this is going to be a great experience and um, another feather to our hats. That's yeah. great. So. Well done. And thank you for well all the done. many years of service. Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, I was listening to an ad yesterday on television. Oh. I heard your voice. I'm like, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. That's yeah. 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 The voice, what? The voice guard? I, I, oh, hey. oh, thank you very much. For hey. oh, <laughs> I, I have been a voiceover artist all through that time. And I, I think it's one of the biggest portion uh, of my daily life uh, yeah. doing voiceovers and uh, oh, the use of voice let's just put it so the use of voice has been the one theme that's run through my entire uh, career. professional career uh, history so yeah and now we're about to hear this voice every yeah. weekend do this talk to us I mean for me it's, uh, it's it's quite interesting so I started out fresh out of school in fact my journey started with Kofi Battelle's who is the host of the politics <laughs> HQ um, and it was all the way back in Crossover State to Co Broadca uh, Broadcasting Corporation in Crossover State, South, South Nigeria. So that's where I started fresh out of school. I was an artist there. Uh, they used to call us an artist, but basically it was on air, on radio and television. So we're doing that back and forth. And I did that for a short while. And then I went into, you know, administration, HR, full on white, you know, the corporate, you know, job. And then I decided, I was like, look, you know, I've done this. I've paid my quota. Black tax is over and done with. It's time to, you know, follow my dreams. And so, in 2018, I returned back into media full time, and I started off uh, radio. You know, built my way up. <laughs> You're not going to tell them. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, something's no. missing. No, no. <laughs> but of course, I started back on radio as well. It was, you know, and then of course I got to work with Mizuno, work go. with uh, Olive, and work <laughs> with. Uh, 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 Joe as well. So wow. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been it's been quite the journey as well. So and in that in that time, I've been able to delve into all of the the uh, different genres of journalism or media. So from um, from uh, radio to television to reporting on the ground to production as well to voice of a uh, voice of act acting as well as you know just entertainment you know journalism proper journalism in terms of broadcasting as well as, you know, other contemporary uh, broadcasting. So I've pretty much done everything, you know, and I feel like this is a new era uh, in my, on my journey in media. I like, I like that. I like that. So, I mean, for our viewers who have actually followed through, they've, they've gotten the background, uh, it means your hosts, your hosts for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, on a brand new breakfast extra, mm -hmm. brand new breakfast extra, um, <laughs> is going to be like one that you would have a mixture of people who understand every single thing about the media, okay? So, let's, let, let, let me say this. I mean, I'm excited um, because we've also been behind the scenes to mm. see what Breakfast Extra is about to do to modern-day television. <clears throat> um, television these days uh, needs a little bit of change. It's beyond just talking to those in power, um, asking them questions, trying to... Um, twist them mm -hmm. and try to get answers. I think people need something that could 
give them some sense of relief. Mm -hmm. So what do you think will make this breakfast extra a must watch uh -huh. and quite different? I'm going to go with the lady first. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> Hang in there. No, cool. uh, <laughs> a must watch for us. Um, the, the very first thing is that we looked at all of the breakfast shows that we had. Sorry, guys, I'm going to put you guys on chopping blocks mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but we looked at all of the stories, all the breakfast shows that we had, and we decided that what can stand us out in terms of what already, I mean, breakfast is a new weekend, breakfast shows are not new. And so we decided that number one was, is going to be personality driven. That was very important to us. And then secondly, story treatment mattered to us and how we were telling the stories and how we were bringing the personalities who were coming on to tell those stories. So that's really, really different to be personality driven as well as going behind the stories and telling them in a more nuanced stand. Okay. Mm. Do you want to add to that? Oh, well, she said almost everything, but okay. I'm going to add one little bit that I'm looking forward to absolutely, and that is something called the strips. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the strips. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't think that we give enough accolade to people who um, transfer, who, who um, make the news into different art forms. Now, over the years, and as a kid growing up, I used to enjoy seeing uh, the cartoons inside of the newspapers. And I think that these guys were fantastic artists. The way they can take doom and gloom and make it funny, they're still passing the message across, but they don't get enough TV time, radio time, talk time, because yeah, hey, that's it. But we want to bring that to the fore. We want to talk about these art forms that are actually news forms uh, and also um, try to get people, or well, sound the alarm on them and make them as popular as everybody else, as you, Joe, or Amazing. you. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, mm -hmm. Judith said that this is going to be more of a personality-driven mm -hmm. show. So I'm interested in what your personality is. I was going to be the stubborn head. Uh, that one show. Sure. Anyway. That, that man mm. over there. I would, I would like to think that my personality is already showing through. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to keep it on the wraps. going to keep it on the reins in any case because this is news and this is serious business, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> so, uh, okay. We look sure forward that, to it. Yeah. We look forward to it. But so then again, it, it's a, it amazes um, a lot of persons to think that broadcasters don't have a life mm. aside from talking politics <laughs> and all of that mm. you know until you see olive dance on social media you wow. wonder what's going on wow or you and see Mazino see... riding the power bike Ooh. Ooh. That's a bike you see Judith, you know giving you some steps at one event somewhere <laughs> while eating chicken and so on but then again finally i think the viewers would like to know exactly what timing time. yeah uh, yes, tomorrow and sunday all right. Jesus, please. Yeah, of course, uh, like you've seen from the trailer, it's uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, we're going to start at 8 a.m. It's a three-hour show, so from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And right in between of the show, of course, we'll bring you news, entertainment, health, sports, the news, of course, and uh, everything in between. We're also excited for another segment. It's called The Weekend Warrior. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, and we're excited for that one. Mm -hmm. So you want to stick around for that. It's where we pick out somebody to celebrate who's done something very, 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 uh, that's what celebrating and uh, this week's uh, this week's weekend edition is, is exciting. We look forward to that one. I want to ask you a naughty question. Naughty. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Our time is up. Sorry. <laughs> time is up. <laughs> In one minute. The name of your show is Breakfast Extra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I were to speak to your family members and mm -hmm. your loved ones, what is that character trait of yours that they would say makes you very extra? Mm. Ooh, what makes me extra? Mm. Uh, I know that's a that's a question that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, I think I'm. I'm I think. Uh, uh, on all accounts and every aspect of life, I'm a very adventurous person, whether it's social or it's professional. <laughs> That's why I've been jumping up and down. <laughs> I, ex I love to explore, and everybody knows that about me. You, you stated that I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a tour vlogger. Um, I ride across the country. And I'm no, very specify what you ride, please. I, I ride a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. I ride a motorbike across Nigeria. And I love doing it. I'm looking forward to the Lagos Calabar Highway, by the way. I'm hoping that it's something I can, mm. you know. But this is 1,000, I'll be how much? 3,000. 3, for motorbikes? No, no, <laughs> no, no motorbikes would be like, 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 just hold on. Let's not, yeah, let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not say, oh, they've accepted the fee. Let's not, let's not, let's not jump the bell. What makes you extra? Ooh, um, number one is that I am dramatic. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm just dramatic, you know? We know. I am dramatic. And then secondly, I am, of course, a yellow. I'm a burst of energy, very energetic. I'm outgoing, I'm fun and everything else. And then uh, what makes me extra is how ambitious I am. I'm mm -hmm. very ambitious. I pay attention to detail. Everything that I do, I do very, very passionately, whether it's relationship, whether it's love, whether it's friendship, whether it's especially job, I'm very, very, very passionate. So those are the things that make me extra. Oh, amazing. I'm sorry, I read a lot. I spend too much time 
Barry, Barry my nose in the book. I love mm -hmm. it. Way too much. I'm not going and to. And Judith is also the host of um, uh, Literacy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the book show. You, you'd love it. I, mean, I love she it. She reads a lot. In celebration of Breakfast Extra, I think we should also share what makes us extra. What makes um, extra? You want me to say that? Olive is dramatic as well. No, I no, 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 no. I know what makes, what makes me extra. Yes, what makes you extra? A lot of people don't know. That's why I'm happy. Please a lot tell of us who, now. Except this guy who knows me. Tell what, us. What makes me extra? Yes. There's so many. I give, us one, give us so one. Many. Give us um, one. Give us one. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> can, can I give them an aspect? I don't know, I don't know which one. An aspect of Joe you guys don't know is actually a very emotional guy. I remember my very first day on radio. Uh huh. Uh, and I was having a very tough time. Uh, it was, um, um, I, I didn't know what to say. And I turned over to this guy, he came into the studio and I said, Joe, I'm confused, I know nothing to say. The very first person, the very first man that gave me a hug. <gasps> oh! I don't know if you remember Joe. But Joe said, it, now you're it, it, Was he weirded out by the hug? Because he can be such a weirdo <laughs> no, when it comes I, to I, the I, Joe, affection. I've never said this before. I've never told you about that moment, oh. but it was a very special moment. It, it actually, it I felt me. like, I had someone I could it. I could I could trust someone that had my back. Someone's like, you can do it. Yeah, no, Joe is so very sweet. supportive guy. Very supportive. That's the word. Yeah. That's my extra fact. That's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hide your other ones. He's a team player. He supports everyone. He's like, yeah, he's a cheerleader. He's like, go, go. I think yeah, this is the interesting yeah, thing. Like, I'm really glad to have heard yeah. that. After this show, we're all going to give a group hug. Oh, but no, he's the one. Times have changed. <laughs> Times have changed. I knew it was He's so weirded out by it. I, like, I, I have to wrap like, yours up. <laughs> well, interestingly, I was going to say the one thing that makes me extra is how much I love to hug. Oh. I'm a hugger. You barely hug me. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, no, 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 no. Because dramatic. when you come in the morning, I'm not a morning person. So well, at, at 5 a.m., I'm still trying to boot. Mm. But after the show, come. Come and collect hugs. Okay. So today, we're going to be giving out hugs to each other and to you. We'd Drive like to say to that you please Central. exactly come to New Central, but more importantly, <laughs> Join us on social media to continue the conversation at New Central TV on all platforms. But more importantly, tune in to Breakfast Extra tomorrow and Sunday. What time? From 8 a.m. We can't wait to see. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, we cannot hug. Can we hold hands and say goodbye? Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Thank you. See you guys on Saturday and Sunday.